the Niners get the win in spectacular fashion, 34-31, with a 17-point halftime deficit. They make the comeback. They get the win over Eminem's Lions. Sorry, Marshall Mathers. Uh, Your double birds can fly on back to Detroit. Uh, I mean, shame on him for thinking he could could – Talk about the birds being in the Detroit. You know what? Honestly, Only one person. <laughs> I, I I'm not mad. Honestly, like like when Emin, it, it, honestly, if I was sitting there in the stands right below Eminem's box and he didn't flip me off, I would have been offended. You know, like I I that's the minimum that I expect from him. Um, as a lifelong Detroit, you know, he's a Detroit native. He's been a Lions fan forever. He's been suffering. Um, and they were they were in the driver's seat for the entire first half and. I was I was nervous as shit in halftime, but I had not quite given up hope yet. Um, yeah, I think at I that think... point I knew that the Niners had to get the like they get the ball back. They had to score. I would have preferred a touchdown, but they get at least a field goal. And then um, they the the Lions they they go on fourth down for it, and uh, he drops the ball right, and and uh, then we're we're off to the races at that point. The Niners go down and score a touchdown. And then uh, that's when it gets up to uh, 24-17. And then you get a turnover on the first offensive p- uh, play. Uh, and and that's at that point, that's when I knew I was like, okay, this is ours now. Like, it's it's going to take over. At Dan, Dan Campbell's getting so much heat in the media today that I think is, is it warranted? Sure, from that game. But right. that that's been Dan Campbell all season long. Nothing right. this change. is this and is I and I playoff. I yeah. I could appreciate that. I understand sometimes you need to play better odds football, especially in a championship game, which Dan right. Campbell definitely should have. But mm-hmm. I I appreciate that he didn't change course of anything he did all season long to get the Lions to where they're at. Right, at and moment. I mean, uh, I think about uh, when when he could have kicked that field goal when they were up fourteen. Instead, they go they go for it on fourth. And was it um was it Williams that dropped it? Yeah, um, uh, yeah. The first one was Williams. The first the one, was one was Williams. Reynolds. I mean, they were they were up fourteen still at that point. They could have kicked a field goal to make it a three score game. That's what you need to do in playoffs. That's I get that you're a bit of a gambler, but at this at this stage of the season, you can't do what you do in the regular season. Sometimes, sometimes you got to take the you got to take the, you got to throw out whatever you know your mantra is and just do the better percentage play. And you got to play the possessions, right? Yeah. Uh, don't don't necessarily worry about the clock at that point of the game, but know that the Niners only have three or four more possessions. And if you are up three, if you make it a three possession game, that increases your odds, right, of winning. So, yeah, even even I mean even that like when you go back to the Packers game and Shanahan was playing chess and everyone was playing checkers, he deferred so to kick that ball so he could have the ball with the last two minutes of the half and then starting the new half of the ball again, but exactly. being up 14. It's, it's basically stealing a, another possession. Yeah. And yeah. and that that's, that's the way that a lot of teams like to uh, go about it yeah. uh, the, in these days. But uh, I I'm just uh, like the, and then later in the game, you're down three, you're, you know, it's a deep field goal that they would have had to try, but they, um, uh, they, they, they try any, they, they try to get it on fourth again and, and they get stopped again. And yeah, at that point, it's like you, you got to go for the tie, man. You're you, you got to get points on the board. I mean, I get that you're a gambler, but uh, this is a learning opportunity for him and the Lions as a whole. And uh, and I ro- appreciate you're the road team. Take the points. Just keep exactly. taking points. Yeah, you're the yeah, road exa- team. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, uh, the Lions definitely left uh, some opportunities for them to take this game on the table, uh, but I'm not too mad about it because i benefited uh greatly from that uh, uh the niners uh they they do execute in the second half big time uh, uh just everything that was that going wrong they, by, they turned it around by bosa dude yeah that locker room speech yeah yeah he's like on, on his back with like heating do, pads do, 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 do your job. job do your job yeah just do your job mm-hmm. and <laughs> okay. they did big time you know what sam you know what that speech was like and, and Vince, uh, I'll allude you into this to this inside joke here. It was like Ron when he made us sign up for that wine wine. Uh, uh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we had greatest this, we salesman went, ever. We went, we went wine tasting, and uh, we were gonna get like a glass of wine for the table, like everyone to get a glass of wine. Mm-hmm. And, the, and our guy Ron, who was our server, goes, "Just get a bottle." And we're like, 
okay, we'll just get a bottle then. And then he goes, just sign up for the membership. We're like, okay, we'll just sign up for the membership. Like, he had his soul. The most <laughs> lackluster, convincing argument ever. We're like, okay, sounds great to me. Yeah, he played it low key. He played it low key. Yeah. He knew, he knew you guys. <laughs> the hard sell wasn't going to work. It's yeah. just you got to kind of just undercut it a little bit, you know? Yeah, that was like Nick Bosa. Yeah. Like he didn't even raise his voice. No, just mm-hmm. do your job. Just do your job. Yeah, and that was it. <laughs> and but they it did like, do their you know, job. The, the tale of two halves. The defense, you know, mm-hmm. showed up for the 49ers. Uh, McCaffrey showed up, and then oh my god, the quarterback for the 49ers was running around, extending yeah. plays. Yeah, 20, two two separate Lamar 21 Jackson yard shit. Yeah. <laughs> 21 yard rushes, two of them at two separate times picked up major first downs every time got them. Yeah, one of them took him down to like the 4 yard line. Another one was like inside the 20. Like he uh Brock Purdy was making plays left and right in that second half and uh I think about use check with the toe tap uh to get a first down. Th- that was an incredible play. The biggest play of the entire game uh, they go, they go for it. Chuck it fifty something yards off the helmet. Brandon Ayuk there to scoop it. And did you hear what he said? Why it happened? The ladybug. It was the ladybug uh, pregame on his the ladybug shoe. catch. And that's uh, that's that's good luck. <laughs> They're calling it the ladybug catch now. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, I think I I don't know what like the it was the entire sequence of that third quarter. I, do you call it the third quarter? Like because. The Niners already have three the catches, so that that yeah. feels a little ridiculous to call it the catch four because the other three were touchdowns. I mean, I I mean he caught a not. touchdown right after that. You yeah, yeah it was like the a couple plays game. later. <laughs> yeah. We we also have Miracle at Meadowland two. Like no, it, no, I, <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean. Like like, <laughs> I'm getting the I'm getting the ladybug in there. <laughs> yeah, I'm going um, with the ladybug game. <laughs> uh, uh, it, another thing that kind of confused me and um. I think your stepdad's in the chat asking about it. It's the run defense. Yes. And part of it is what su- like surprises me is how effective the Lions were with the rush in the first half. And when you're up 17, you figure they're good. They're going to just rush it the rest of the game. But no, that's that's not what happened. They only get like 38 rushing yards the rest of the way. Um, part well, of it is the Niners fumble. stepped up. But uh, the, yeah. the other part is they didn't really try. I mean, because the few times that they did rush it, they still found success. But for whatever reason, the Lions decided they're going to play like they're behind when they're actually in the lead. And I, I, it's either genius or insanity. Uh, and it ended up being insanity at that point. As for the Niners rush defense itself, it's been like, you know, like a lot of people talk about how great it's been like through the regular season. And statistically that bears out. But also, I don't think a lot of teams really truly tried to like rush it against the Niners. I think they saw some opportunities against non Charvarius ward cornerbacks and tried to pick on them instead. Uh, Ambry Thomas kept getting torched uh, again. So I, I kind of, well, I will, maybe, I will I, say I don't know, I'm a little concerned. Maybe they're just a little rusty. They just weren't expecting because uh, this is two, ga- two games in a row. The Niners have played like crap uh, on defense, uh, I, and, I, and if they figure it out and if for the Super Bowl, if they start suddenly decide to start playing what they're capable of playing to, that makes me feel really good. Like you've had two, two of your worst games really of the season and you still get wins and they're in the playoffs. That that makes me feel like the, the doors are wide open uh, yeah. at least. So I, I'm, I'm feeling cautiously optimistic again. Your your chances. Super Bowl, you will get blitz. Steve Spagnola will blitz the living oh, crap yeah. out of you. Yeah. Like constantly. Brock has been Brock has been excellent against the uh, against a lot of uh things that people wouldn't expect. Uh, like he's been excellent against the blitz. He's been great outside the numbers, which is you you uh, people assume that he's a dink and dunk guy because of all the talents around us. No, Brock has been. Uh, we talked about it last week. He's been pushing nothing, the ball down the field. Nothing, he pushes the ball downfield, but you know, sometimes we use this term dink and dunk as a knock against a guy. Yeah. That's fucking smart football. So mm-hmm. if you, you know, look at look at Baltimore, right? Baltimore was blitzing. Um, and what was Mahomes doing? He was dumping the ball off. Yep. Pacheco behind yep. the blitzer. Yeah, so didn't Kelsey no have like eleven 
uh, 11, 11 grabs no for Kelsey. There. Like, so, I mean, yeah, this is right what, over the top. Go. This is yeah. what Brock Purdy is going to do uh, when he gets blitzed. He's shown it for over a year now. When he gets blitzed, uh, sh- you know, uh, Shanahan's smart enough to know, and the receivers are smart enough to know that when that blitz happens, you're running to the open space. You're running towards the area that that person vacated. And yep. they do things with motion. So if you move a guy, say say you, you move a guy from, from outside and you move him in and you hike the ball, you're positioning that wide receiver to get the inside track because you know the blitz is happening, so you're going to put the corner on the outside. So that yep. pass, you're just going to throw it to, to a spot and that receiver is going to go and get it. So I don't really, I'm not really worried about the blitz against the 49ers and it, it's the same for Mahomes. I'm I'm not really worried against the blitz against Mah- Mahomes. Mahomes the hasn't thing. been sacked in like something like two years or year and a half or something like that. In it, the playoffs. Yeah. yeah and he's crazy stat. Mahomes mm-hmm. is crazy because he's not necessarily a blazing fast guy but he does enough to move around. And then when he does get into open space, he's going to hurt you. He's athletic enough to hurt you. And yeah. I would say he's probably a little more athletic than, than, than Purdy as far as running. Um, but Purdy flash, man, you know, he, he extended what he needed to do. Um, keep how many of these sacks is like, he's down. No, wait, no, he's not. He ducks under it. Uh, that, that use check uh, toe tap that I talked about. That was one of them. He was Jimmy Garoppolo was sacked on that, you know, but Brock Purdy found a way to escape out of it, duck under it, swim move, whatever, spin around, and then extend the play. Yeah, like you were talking about, man. But how many times, too, that, I mean, on those runs where people are, are swiping out his ankles and he, it disrupted him, but he w- he had the strength to to power through to get it and still get a throw off. Oh, yeah. Um, so, I mean. Well, that to your point, though, Sam, like that's, that's what makes your CMC so amazing is that he's probably one of the best, if not the best, you know, receiving running backs, right? Catching, right? He knows when you're getting blitz to go into a hole and get into a flat to where the defense is not at. And it can just be that bailout all the time for, for Purdy, right? Absolutely. And I think that's that's one trait that I, I think goes super underrated, but it was brought up two weeks ago uh, before the Packers game. I'm sorry. Yeah, I guess two weeks ago now that they brought that up uh, as far as like a game film tape thing. And I was like, I've been noticing this all season long. He just is, is underrated because he's able to bail out his, his quarterback when he needs to bail out his quarterback. And I think that what makes CMC so special. Right. So I mean, it's what yeah. makes this offense so special. It's what makes uh, Kyle Shanahan such a, you know, a, a respected uh, offensive play caller. I mean, some of the, Offensive schemes is is running what his dad has ran, you know what what Mike Shanahan has ran, but he's putting his own little wrinkle on it, you know. Yeah. And we know that the the Shanahan offense is going to open it up for running backs. I mean, the Shanahan family has turned out uh, many running backs. Yeah. Um, you know, and, I mean, so so he's made mid guys good. He's made good guys great. He's made great guys Hall of Famers. You know, exactly. Like, like and, he's able know, to elevate, Elway, get the most out of them. You know, uh, Mike Shanahan had it, had John Elway for a long time, but as soon as he got Terrell Davis, all of a sudden they they get two, uh, two Super Bowls. You know, be, because of the the running back, because they were finally able to put it all together, and now Kyle Shanahan has CMC as an MVP caliber uh, running back who could you know catch the ball, run the ball, and for for a smaller back, McCaffrey's able to like get through. A sloppy, so yeah. messy area, you know. He, um, he, he's size and speed, you know. He's right. the best and, of both worlds. And, and then you got Debo, who's who's a wide receiver who we'll is capable, a wide back. Is capable of being a running back, but they're like opposite ends of uh, the spectrum of each other. You know, you got yeah. a, a running back who could be a receiver, and then you got a receiver who's a running back, and then you got uh, Ayuk, who's, who's becoming a legit number one guy. Um, you know, what did he have? Like 1200 yards on the seasons receiving yeah. 1100, something like that. Yeah. 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 He cleared 12. Um, I think, um, I did so say he, this year was the year that I was going to, I no, actually let me rephrase. My stepdad said, this was going to be the year I was going to go off, try and draft if you can. And I fully believed him and I got him in one league. I didn't get him in the other one, but he did go off this no, year. I mean, and then George, you know, you got George Kittle. Who's, you know, then you got probably the best wide uh, receiving 
fullback. You know, he's not going to get a lot of touches because of other guys, but, you know, hey, he stepped up when he needed to. So there's a lot of weapons on this 49er offense, and that definitely helps Brock Purdy. Um, but we've seen other quarterbacks with this team, with the same uh, pieces, and they they were not able to perform. I really I really don't think any you can put any quarterback in this system and they're going to perform. I just do not believe that is true. Oh, um, so Brandon Ayuk stats just to clear it up: seventy-five receptions, one thousand three hundred forty-two yards, seven touchdowns, an average of seventeen point nine yards per reception. Yeah, yeah, half of that is probably yak. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. I mean, this is you know the yak brothers for sure. And then and that's what you know again with uh you know you blitz these guys, you blitz Purdy, and he's gonna dump it off. All of these receivers, all of them. Uh, even Jennings was, was making plays when his number was called, when he had to, when he had to step in yeah. last week, uh, for Debo, cause Debo what, was out on the fourth, fifth play of the game. But I, mean, I also think that that's, up. that's why the Lions tailed off in the second half, because they're all this, you know, what you want to call dink and dunk is that they're getting chewed up, you know, five, six, seven, ten yards per play. Well, now you the gotta bring thing, some guys out back into yeah. pass coverage. You gotta bring some guys back at this the point. other thing that the 49ers do, I think better than anybody else is their wide receivers fucking block yeah, yeah. wide receivers block and if mm -hmm. you ain't gonna block in this offense you're not on the team yeah yeah you know, uh i i would uh add in that basically the entire year um except for a couple of times we would go into halftime we would see the niners go into halftime they'd be up maybe a touchdown or three or even just down three or tied game it it would look like a close game, but then in the second half, the switch is flipped, and then they they like turn on the afterburners, and it ends up being a fourteen, you know, seventeen, twenty point win. Like uh, that happened time and time again. It's happening in the playoffs, uh, but uh, but but now it's just like they're 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 from behind a lot further than I'd like. Um, so if they it, like anytime it's a close game, if, now I know if it's within 17 points, I'm not ruling it out. Right. So, right. I, mean, I mean, this is this is what the Niners have been the entire time. And that's the only reason why I wasn't giving up hope yet is because we talked about it before. The Niners have been a second half team the entire year. They've been whether it's making adjustments or just getting their heads right and you know telling each other to just do your job. You yeah, know, I mean, they, 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 whatever happens in halftime, they get it right. They get it fixed. And now they're going to the Super Bowl where they're going to have, instead of 12 minutes, they're going to have a, like a half an hour halftime where if there is stuff to, to manage or fix or whatever or draw up on the fly, they can do that now. You what, know? what was your, what was your Usher's first song? Uh, I think it's, I, yeah. I think, I think it's, it's coming up. It's, yeah, as well. I think he's uh, the reason why I think yeah, it's, it could yeah. be like the second song. And then he surprises everybody with Luda and Lil John coming That's, out as the second song. So then maybe he does something else first. I think um, he comes like, out like, with maybe uh, it's OMG. Ooh, we could. could I think he comes out with the, with, with, with Luda and, and Lil John first, because then the rest of the show was just usher. You no, already see, got, I mean, we, we've seen other halftime shows where it's like when, when it's just one person, if they do bring out guests, it's early in the show, but it's not the first song. It's never Ooh. the first song. So that's why I'm thinking if he is going to bring them out um, or that song, song, then it'll be like the second or the third song of like a seven song set or whatever. I, I know MGM has got this on a bet, so I'll have to take a look and see what they're yeah. at. They're I mean, just, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's more stuff we can talk about next week. Uh, you know, when, when we get all the, um all the fun little side bets, that's, yeah. that's really yeah. where it's at. Um. So, uh, I mean, I, I think I, I'm just really excited that they were able to get the job done. Uh, Brock Purdy had, you know, over 50 yards rushing, but that last uh, kneel down on fourth down, uh, 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 third down and fourth down, uh, that put him under 50 yards. So he only had like 48 or whatever, but he had 50, he had more than 50 yards rushing on plays that count. What was his passing? Did he finish 300? Did he get there? Uh, no, it, it was, was like 260, 260 something. something. Yeah. yeah. Damn, uh, should take the under. <laughs> they had him at right 30, 306. 306.5. Yeah. I mean, uh that that's the advantage of having a uh, a well-balanced attack is uh yeah. 
you know, they, they didn't have to throw every single pass to make that 17 point. Comeback. I mean, look, you're going to make all the parallels you want, but it reminds you of the Eagles last year. Like, how do you want it? Oh, you want us to run it? We'll run down your throat. Oh, you mm-hmm. want you want us to pass it? We'll pass it. How do you CJ, want it? CJ Gardner Johnson doing his little wave with five and a half minutes left. Never, in the never do quarter. that. Never he do was that. Asking for trouble at that point. Yeah, yeah. You are asking for hurt, man. But did you guys see? He's Debo's getting tweet? properly ripped. What? Did you guys see Debo's tweet? No. Uh, oh, oh, so somebody Debo, check on <laughs> little. Somebody whatever. check on little bro. Check oh, on little bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's true though. Like that's that's this 49ers offense. It's like, how do you want it? Like, yeah, we're not doing great, but we'll figure it out and give it to you. Oh, you just figure that out. Oh, we'll just turn it around. Just do it like this. Like that's yeah. that's your offense right now. But right. I will say. You know, if you're going quarterback to quarterback, Purdy is 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 right up there. But it's going to be a tough test if you're going uh, uh, toe to toe with with oh. the homes, man. Oh yeah, absolutely. This is. I mean, I, I I'm going to give uh, the Rams some flowers right now. I mean, not the, not the Rams, the, the Lions. Lions some flowers Lions. Uh, right now. Uh, they 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 had a hell of a season. Yeah. Uh, if they were playing any other team besides the Niners, I probably would have been cheering for them. You sure. know. Yeah. Uh, and. They they made the Niners work for that win. They they gave them everything they had and then some. It came down in the end. It came down to an onside kick that they couldn't quite recover. You know, so uh, they almost had it, and then they realized well, they touched it nine. He yards. touched it about a yard and a half too soon. Um, Kittle ended up on top of it anyway. So I mean, uh, the Niners sealed the deal, and uh, on that last play was where it ended up. But they, they definitely made the Niners work for it, and it was a hell of a season. And they, they have a lot, like, of the, like, 100 best players list that comes out every year, I expect to probably see seven or eight of those dudes on it next year, you know? Um, yeah, I think that, that team is not done. Like, that team, that's a no, young team. They're they're, they're going to make some back. noise. Yeah. yeah they'll, they'll be back. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. they're, they're I mean, the the up and down the roster, I mean, they got a, a really good roster. And mm-hmm. what they're it, able to, to add, hopefully um, – you know, they're going to have a later draft pick, but they've been finding talent through every round, you know? Yeah. So if they, they can keep hitting and add a couple of free agents, obviously they need help on the defensive line. Um, Aiden Hutchinson needs help. Um, their secondary is, I mean, they tr- they sell out to stop the run. Um, so they're willing to sacrifice the past. So if they get some safeties, some corners, I mean, that's kind of the missing element on yeah, defense it's, it- is, is some defensive back. The, the another, defense another needs, a, needs a little bit of Reno. Um, the offense is basically there. Um, uh, they, you know, obviously you want to just keep adding pieces wherever you can. If you find talent, you can get. When talent. they made that trade, right? But, they got rid of Stafford and they got Jared Goff in oh. return, mm-hmm. and it didn't start off too well. What were they like three and 13? three thirteen and one in that and first then, season yeah. with Goff? And every I said it, you know, oh, you ain't gonna win with Jared Goff, but you know, Goff is. Again, one game away from a Super Bowl. Yeah. And how sneaky good he's been. And all these people, all these, all these pundits were taking Goff over over Brock Purdy. And, you know, obviously the uh, you know, the um 49ers are advancing, but you know, Goff deserves his flowers too. He, you know, he he made some mistakes and but he also delivered a bunch of passes that his, that his wide receivers dropped. Yeah, I mean, when, when he yeah. had a clean pocket, he was as good as anybody in this league. He had a clean and, pocket for most of the night. Yeah, it, it, especially that first half. Like, the yeah. Niners just, outside of Nick Bosa, nobody was able to get to him uh, yeah. for basically the entire game. Uh, they were able to move him around a little bit. And when he started moving around, that's when he had some more problems. I think guys and had, ended up honestly, with like two or three sacks, something like that. At the uh, end of the night. I think it was, I think it was like three, but uh, yeah. Bosa had two of them. Yeah. Uh, so Bosa finally showed up. Welcome to the playoffs. You know, yeah. um, no so, time like yeah. a present. do your job. <laughs> exactly. Do your uh, job. To, to your dad's point, unfinished business with the Chiefs. What does he mean by that? Because uh, four years ago, that's why. Mm, okay. okay. Um, because there are a few, like quite a few players from that 2019 uh, team and then this 2023 team, uh, there are still quite a few players on both sides. Um, well, Pops, the Eagles have unfinished business with the Chiefs too. Everybody has unfinished business with the Chiefs. Yeah. If you go back the last like four or five years ago. Yeah, he, yeah <laughs> here's, the, here's the thing. Uh, the Niners basically in this Kyle Shanahan era have not had much luck with the Chiefs. Um, yeah. They have more um, quarterback ACL tears than wins against the Chiefs uh, <laughs> under fun. Kyle Shanahan. So that's not fun. Uh, maybe they're just due. We'll we can talk more about that next week, though. Um, 
Uh, I'm ready to move on from the Niners, uh, unless you guys have any other points you want. No, to no, no. Let's 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 rally down this coaching carousel. Okay. No, 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 no. We we didn't even talk Ravens Chiefs yet. Um. Yeah. We, we skipped no, I mean, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um uh the Chiefs win 17-10 over Baltimore in Baltimore. Baltimore uh, blew it, man. They yeah, fucking they, blew it. They gave that game yeah. away. Uh, yeah. yeah, that was uh, Zay Flowers, as talented as he is, he he made a couple of critical errors between the uh, the taunting penalty and uh, f- and fumbling on the half yard line. Uh, that's oh, just that, that, those that's are, the biggest one. That's the big one. The yeah. taunting one they almost yeah. were able to recover from, but uh, that taunting that 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 what that ended up killing them. That was it. Uh, the that that fumble through the yeah. End zone. I mean, it was it was a chippy game. It was a great game. Uh, I mean, you had <laughs> Lamar passing to himself inadvertently. Um, yeah, off the deflection, I mean, we've seen that. Yeah, Lamar did some crazy things. Like Lamar proved that he's a great quarterback. But at the end of the day, you know, talent yeah, doesn't always beat out hard work. Hard work zone, beats too. out talent. So yeah, yeah. I mean, he uh, they they really. I thought that the Chiefs did a pretty good job of limiting his ability to run uh, yeah. they made they really made him be a pocket passer more and they were I'll, able I'll to defend this. it better too the app that i had had him at over and under at 11 rush rushes and i was like chief's gonna hold him below that and he finished at eight so yeah yeah, yeah they definitely held him in check for sure yeah i mean uh he he's it, obviously it's some you know they're they're a team that's gonna be a problem that defense is stellar um yeah it's amazing the Bears give up Roquan, Roquan Smith. I mean, why would you want that guy, right? Yeah, yeah. Give him away for freaking nothing. Well, they gave away um, him, and they gave away the other kid to to the Eagles, which I think he left to go somewhere else in free agency. But I mean, the, the Bears. I'm like, what are you guys doing? I don't understand what they're doing. But hey, at the end of the day, they're offloading. They're trying to rebuild i guess i don't know what they're trying to do i can't figure out what the bears are the bears are internally rebuilding i mean (laughs) that's what it really comes down to with uh with baltimore i mean they it's like the apex of poking the bear you know the pregame i was telling vince came over and was watching the the first game they co you know you got the the kicker set up in the chiefs end zone where where mahomes and kelsey and the chiefs are running warm-ups and he's over there trolling yeah. the Chiefs. And then that made it to Twitter. And then so people are talking, you know, oh, you know, because Patrick Mahomes and Kelsey are like throwing the the little kicking stand and the helmet. You don't get the fuck out of here. And the Chiefs are getting slandered for it. We're like, go set up on your side, dude. And to me, that was poking the bear. And then the the Ravens are standing over there, and there's a little the little scuffle on the sideline, mm-hmm. and you you came talking that talk, and you didn't really show up to play, and it was the uh, there was the penalty where I, I believe it was Roquan Smith should have just touched the helmet, right? He, he was he trying to turn a the first helmet. and five into a first and ten to um, get the so, clock, yeah, because yeah. then the, the clock is going to go, but then I'm they got to go 15, ten yards, unsportsmanlike. Yeah. And then you drilled the fucking guy. Then you give him a first down and the 15. All he had to do was touch the shoulder touch pad. Him. That's it. My, just uh, touch the helmet. Real quick. My, so it's my, just undisciplined. My stepdad said Lamar played small. He could take his MVP and hide it in his closet. There you, <laughs> you know, it's just, it was just so undisciplined that, you know, the, you make a big catch and then you, you spike it on a dude's head and, you know, say something like, dude, if you wanted to celebrate, get up, face the other way, throw the ball, make do your first hand, ge- your first down gesture, move on. But then you know you, you get the penalties, they flowers, and then you fumble it, and then the interception in the end zone. So I mean, you had points on the board, yeah. and yeah. you, you would have handedly won this game if you would have stayed committed to just executing. Instead, they wanted to talk that Pump mess the chest out, and yep. and. You cannot do that against this Chiefs team. Andy Reid in this entire team is disciplined, is tough. Andy Reid's a mentally tough person. He is a fucking Hall of Fame head coach. Yep. You cannot do this against the Chiefs. 
and he's even with the commercial still, personality. Still one of with, my biggest even regrets. with wide receivers that even without Tyreek Hill, even with the worst <laughs> receiving group that Patrick Mahomes has, he has a Hall of Famer in Kelsey. He has Pacheco and uh he has Rice. Those guys are firing on those guys are firing right now. Yeah. And you, you and, can't take and, them lightly, and Baltimore did. And you got BME. So I mean, I and you got one arguably one of the great good great DCs. Arguably one of the greater ones. Like he can adjust on a fly. So it's going to be a fun Super Bowl. As I said, losing Big Red with the Eagles is one of my biggest regrets. But I feel like uh, time was uh, passed at that point, and we felt like we weren't going to get past the uh, championship round without uh, moving on. But Big yeah, Red on- proved them all wrong. It, it, it honestly, <laughs> it uh, it's kind of weird right now. Um, the Niners are getting all of the. Um, all of the hate that somebody that's won three Super Bowls has gotten, but without actually completing the job. So it's like everybody's like, ah, oh, ha-, like everybody hates the Chiefs because the Chiefs keep winning. Yeah. But everybody also kind of hates the Niners uh, with the same amount. So a lot of like the NFL memes or whatever, it's like uh, Northern California is like cheering for the Niners. And then you got Kansas and Missouri cheering for the Chiefs. And then the rest of the map is gray saying, ugh. No, cheering for the asteroid, you know. Uh, <laughs> I like, just think so I think it's, it's. I just I, I want the Niners to get the W for many reasons, but at that point, at least they would have earned a little bit of the hate, you know. Yeah, I mean, I don't have a dog in the race, but I, I'm not gonna hate on either two. I think it's gonna be a great game. I hope this game ends as an all time classic, and we get to watch this this game 30 years down the road on ESPN Classics as an all time classic. That's all I, I know, uh, another thing that I know for sure is either way the um the uh the maggots are gonna hate it uh yeah <laughs> that's yeah. that's what i know either either taylor swift is happy or the city or, or or the area that has nancy pelosi in charge of congress for them is gonna be happy so either way the maggots are gonna hate it so whatever <laughs>